Hi, this is Ed Butowski with Making Sense. Every week we go through the top three headlines you might have missed and explain what you should do with your money as a result of those stories. So here we go. Interest rates are rising. Mortgage rates on the 30-year treasury have risen quite a bit. So your 30-year mortgage rates have risen to 3.92%. That's up from 3.69% the week before. And um, a year ago, the long-term rate was 2.81%. The last time the 30-year rate was this high was May of 2019 when it reached 3.99%. And the average on the 15-year fixed rate mortgages, which are very popular these days, rose to 3.15 from 2.93 one week earlier. It stood at 2.21% a year ago, and it last breached 3% in March of 2020, just as the pandemic was breaking. The Federal Reserve has signaled that it's going to raise interest rates, and it's going to start doing that in March. So what should you do? You should shorten your maturities on your fixed income investments, bonds, any that are interest rate sensitive, you should shorten the maturities. Anything you have that's going out longer than five years, reduce them down to one or two years because you're gonna lose principal as interest rates rise. One of the only ways that the United States and Europe is going to be able to negatively impact what Russia is doing in Ukraine is through sanctions. And the bulk of Russia's export revenue comes from mineral products such as oil, natural gas, and coal. This dependence makes energy exports an attractive target for sanctions. The European Union is relying on Russia for more than a third of its natural gas imports. As of January, the US and Europe weren't weighing sanctions against Russia's exports of oil and natural gas directly, given the concern that it would, what it would do to the European economy. However, President Biden said he would consider blocking the opening of the Nord Stream 2 pipeline that would deliver Russian gas to Germany. While the European Union remains Russia's biggest trading partner, Russia has made efforts to diversify expanding ties with China. This includes opening a major gas pipeline to the country in 2019. Natural gas exports to China have grown since then, but are still a very small portion compared to other gas buyers that Russia has. Now, Moscow has been working, and this is very important, to bolster its finances, which could help cushion the economy and keep the government funded even in the event of sanctions. So they've been doing things in preparation for this happening. So Russia is not you know, silly and stupid. They're actually prepared for sanctions this time. And the country has run a conservative fiscal policy and has trimmed debt relative to other countries, such as the United States and the European allies. What should you do with your money? You should have a position in energy providers and be very weary of investing in companies that use a lot of energy to produce their products. Because if in fact there are sanctions on oil, although President Biden says they're not gonna do that, but they might block the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, that is gonna send energy prices a lot higher. Goldman Sachs recently came out and said that we could see $150 a barrel, and right now it's around $90 a barrel. So if in fact you're investing in a company that uses a lot of energy to produce their product or their widget, that's gonna hurt some of their earnings. So you need to kind of look a little deeper into these companies to see which ones are using a lot of energy to produce their products, and you might stay away from those. But at the same time, you might look to invest in energy companies like BP, ConocoPhillips, ExxonMobil. They also pay really nice dividends. So that's what I would do. Avocados are becoming a lot more expensive. The Mexican import suspension has begun. The federal government has suspended all imports of Mexican avocados after a U.S. plant safety inspector in Mexico received a threat. Avocado supplies is ex are expected to shrink in the coming weeks until the suspension is lifted. Consumers also will likely find themselves paying a lot more at the grocery stores and restaurants for avocado products. The grocery store won't be the only place to feel the pressure of the import ban. Restaurants are also likely to pay more for avocados and face challenges securing supplies. Truist analyst Jake Bartlett wrote in a recent note that avocados account for 5 to 10 percent of Chipotle's cost of goods sold and about 2 percent of El Pollo Loco's cost of goods sold. So this is going to impact quite a bit 
of their sales and they're going to then pass that along to you, the end consumer. So hopefully the suspension gets lifted pretty soon because a lot of people like avocado. We eat a lot of avocado in my house and I know that my wife is not happy about this. So, you know, if you're a big, uh, a big Chipotle eater or a big avocado eater, this is something for you to be aware of. What should you do with your money? Nothing as a result of this. I just wanted to share it with you. This is Ed Butowski with Making Sense. Feel free to subscribe below and pass this along to your friends. And I'd love to get your feedback on other subjects that you find interesting that you want me to talk about. Thank you.